If you're like me and you've been riding bikes for many years, you probably have a bunch of patch kits that have dried out tubes of glue. So one of the questions is whether plain old rubber cement works as well as the glues that come with these patch kits. And that's what we're going to test here. To do that, I'm going to use a brand new 26 inch tire tube, a brand new slime patch kit, and some plain old best test rubber cement. The difference between best test rubber cement and slime is that slime uses four solvents, mostly naphtha, but also heptane, heptine, and octane, while regular rubber cement uses only heptane. So what I'm going to do is take a regular 26 inch bicycle tire, I'm going to poke three holes in it, and then I'm going to patch each hole using three different methods. The first method will be slime rubber cement. The second method will be best test rubber cement, but I will coat the patch as well as the area to be patched with rubber cement first. And the third will be best test rubber cement, but only coating the tire and not coating the patch. So first steps, poke the three holes in the tube and mark their locations so that I can uh, find the right place to sand down. So why do we care about rubber cement? Mostly because these tiny tubes that come with our patch kits oftentimes dry up, especially if they've been opened once. So you have a flat, you open up the kit, you, you patch it, you put it back. Six months later, you have another flat and your glue is dry. So one of the things that we were talking about was how can you avoid that? And one of the possible answers was, hey, maybe you put some rubber cement in a nail polish bottle, which is what I have here. Why a nail polish bottle? Well, they're designed to keep nail polish from drying out and do that quite well. So apparently they seal things like acetone very well. So perhaps they will seal rubber cement very well. One nice thing about a glass bottle of rubber cement is that you can simply tip it around and see that your glue is still in good shape and not dried out. So time to open up my brand new slime kit that I picked up from Ace Hardware. Sorry about the bad framing here. Uh, and when I open this up, oh, I'm surprised. What I find is that my tube was leaking. My brand new tube of glue is leaking. Uh, this is one of the problems that we have with tubes. Sometimes you'll buy a brand new patch kit and it's not just leaking, but your tube, because of a fault like this, and because it's sat on the shelf for, you know, who knows how long, is actually dried up. So you think you have a brand new patch kit with your bike, and in fact, you don't. You've got a dried out uh, tube of, of glue that won't do you any good. This was one of the things that started this whole investigation. You know, having a tube of glue and having it dried out in your repair kit. Uh, so here I am roughening up the tire surface. This is super important. It's, it's not just scuff it up a little bit. This isn't merely to create a rough surface so that the glue has good purchase. It is to actually expose unlinked rubber compounds so that they can form new actual chemical links to the glue and to the patch. And unless you actually disturb the outer surface significantly, you do not expose these pieces of rubber so that they can become cross-linked with the rubber that you're adding. So roughing up the tube surface really well is super important. It is also important to make sure that once you apply the glue that you let it dry so that it is no longer tacky. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to let each of these patches of glue dry for about five minutes before I apply a patch. So in the meantime, while one is gluing, I'll be sanding the other spot. Part of why I'm doing it in a staggered way like this is that I'm going to be destructively testing these patches in about two hours after these patches have been uh, applied and check to see if they are actually holding air well. When I do that, I'll do them in the same order that I apply them so that each of them will have about the same amount of time to cure. As you can see, I'm applying the rubber cement using the nail polish applicator, which actually is kind of a handy added bonus to using a nail polish bottle. It comes with a brush, 
which is actually a nice simple way to apply glue you know where you need it without making a, a gloppy mess all over the place sometimes those tubes they can work well but you can easily squeeze out a whole lot of glue unintentionally from those metal tubes and make a mess while you're trying to do a patch so I'm applying the next patch I use tire levers to massage the patch and make sure that it really bonds well. I'm applying a very thin layer of rubber cement to the back of this patch. This is the patch I'm going to use on the second hole where two layers of rubber cement will be used. I've waited approximately five minutes between each patch application. In other words, I've waited about five minutes after applying the glue before putting a patch on the repair area. This ensures that the rubber cement is dry, at least dry to the touch. It is not liquid, it is not shiny, it has a dull finish. And finally, I apply the third patch. Once again I use a tire lever to firmly press all areas of the patch to help ensure that there's a good seal. Now I'm going to check to see that the patches actually hold air. I'm inflating the tire and right now you can see that the actual patches are stretching which is good. They're not peeling off. That means I've got a pretty good glue job probably. Inflate it a little bit more and take a closer look. All three patches look pretty good. Uh, one thing I like to see is that kind of blending on the edge. I don't see it as well on the top of the third patch. But on all the others and every other place I see a nice feathering of the patch compound. Now I submerge this in water and I see no leaks. This is after about 15 to 20 minutes of, uh, of having started the process. So probably the first patch had about 20 minutes to cure and dry and the last patch had about 15. So at this point it's really a little bit unequal in that the third patch was started later. But they're all holding air just fine. Uh, none of them seem to be uh, performing any differently other than the third patch which visually doesn't look as nice at the top. So, I've waited two and a half hours since I started the process, and now I'm going to peel these patches off the tube. And as you can see, this first one is very hard to remove. I'm trying to grab it, and it's kind of fighting me, so I'm going to grab some needle nose pliers. Being careful just to grab the patch. You can see I'm pulling pretty hard and basically the patch is falling apart before it's separating. This is really on there tightly. you can see that I'm starting to get some peel action going. So it hasn't exactly fused but but boy it's awfully darn close to having you know fused with the rubber. In fact on the inside you can see that that orange patch material is black in that it's lifting out pieces of black rubber or is breaking off pieces of black rubber. Anyway it's it's on there very 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 well but it's coming off and it's not it's not as though you can't distinguish between the patch material and the tube material you can and in fact it is peeling
tough that is to get off. So, I'm starting on the second patch. Got a little more experience with how to remove these things, having done one already. And get that started by poking the knife in there. This one seems on there pretty tough too, but it seems to be... Well, tough to remove. Notice how it's coming off in a bigger piece. It seems to be peeling off a little bit easier. I wouldn't call it easy. And of course we saw that it held air, but it's not bonded quite as tenaciously. Uh, you know, maybe in a day it would be, but right now it's just not quite as tough. Notice how I've gotten it off in a bigger piece less uh, disassembling of it and it kind of rolls off a little bit easier. I don't want to suggest that it's coming off easily but it's easier. Part of that's because I'm used to you know I've got more experience peeling them off now but frankly it's just not bonded quite as well. See here how some of the orange doesn't have black on it? So you know maybe that's because I didn't scrub the tire as well or didn't sand Maybe that's because I didn't sand the tires well, but I don't think so. I think I sanded them all pretty pretty well. So here's the third one with with only one coat of rubber cement. And uh, again, it's on there tough. This is, you know, I'm putting some force on there to get it started. I, it's not coming off easily. But once I get going, once I get a part going here, it's... Uh, This one is also coming off in more of one piece than did the first one. Yeah, this one might actually be a little eh, hard to say. I think it's basically the same as the one before. So the one coat and the two coats, not that much different. Uh, not sure if there's a benefit to using two coats. And as you can see, I can get the, you know, it's coming off in more of one piece because it's not on there as tough and so it's not falling apart as much as I, as I rip at it. And you'll see something here, I didn't frame this very well, but on the left, that's the first patch with the slime glue, which has the other solvents. And it is across the entire surface dull. When we get to the other two patch areas, you can see that they're mostly dull, but there's a shiny spot area, and these are the areas where we didn't quite bond as well. You could see on the patch that it was orange in these areas, so we didn't quite get the same bonding to the uh, tube as we did with the, uh, with the slime glue. Both of them had this issue. Does it matter practically? I don't think so, because all these held air uh, when inflated and all these were tough to remove but I would say they probably don't create quite as good a bond uh, so you know in a marginal or tough situation it might be that the slime glue with the extra solvents has a benefit uh, I'm not convinced it's a big benefit but you know when it comes right down to it having something that bonds a little bit better is preferable to having something that bonds a little bit worse.